Hi, I'm Naomi Chesler. I'm an associate professor of biomedical engineering, and today we're going to be talking about leadership. Now, most of the material that I'm going to be talking with you about today is taken from one textbook, and that textbook on organizational behavior is referenced in the accompanying materials that you can find on this website. So please feel free to access those materials and follow along as I go through this presentation, or download it for future reference as you wish. So, to begin talking about leadership, we first need to define what leadership is. And as we're going to define it here today, leadership is the process whereby one member, individual, influences other group members towards attaining defined um, group goals. So now, first of all, that assumes that you know what your group goals are, which maybe you haven't yet defined, but soon you will. And also note that I've said that one individual influences other group members. That means that one individual does not dictate to other group members. A leader is not a dictator. Those really are quite different things. Um, also, a leader is really someone who leads by their action and not necessarily the person who has the name, team leader. You may have noted that from other experiences you've had in other groups. So there could be an assigned team leader, but perhaps in your group that isn't the person who does what you might call leading. So what we're going to do today is talk about what is and what is not leading, and at the very end I'll give you some tips on how to be a good leader, if that is something that you want to be, or something that you've been assigned, um, or something that you just like to learn about. So um, in general, followers are influenced by leaders because they like, respect, and admire them and not because they are coerced into taking certain actions. That piece of coercion goes along with a dictator. Also, um, leaders are not necessarily managers. Leadership skills and managing skills can be quite different. Um, so in general, a leader's role is to establish an organizational mission, whereas a manager's role is to implement um, organizational strategy to achieve that mission. And there's a spectrum, and you can go between these two extremes, um, where leaders can, of course, be managers, and managers can be leaders. But um, in general, it is possible to differentiate their roles in an organization. So what does it take to be a great leader? Well, there's a couple of theories about that. One theory is that there's just, it's called the great person theory. So um, this view is that leaders possess special traits which set them apart from others, and these traits are responsible for their positions of power and authority. So what are these traits, or what do social scientists have evidence um, that these traits might be. Well, one trait is drive. So you have the desire for achievement, ambition, you have high energy, tenacity, and initiative. Um, another trait or characteristic, uh, characteristic is honesty and integrity, and I think we all know what that means. Leadership motivation is another, so this is someone who has the desire to influence others and to reach shared goals. Self-confidence is a trait of most leaders. Cognitive ability, so this means intelligence, um, ability to integrate and synthesize knowledge or large amounts of information, because a leader is typically uh, uh, in, uh, has to grasp a large amount of information and sometimes communicate it to their other group members. So cognitive ability, intelligence is often a piece, although it's not the only thing. And in fact, geniuses often make very, very poor leaders. Um, Knowledge of the business, knowledge of the task at hand is an important trait. Creativity and also flexibility. And flexibility is something we'll come back to later. Is that people who are inflexible often um, can't be good leaders because they can't bring their teams, um, help their teams weather the storms that often come um, in solving problems. So maybe you're lucky enough to have all these traits and characteristics, but what if you're not? Can you become a leader? Can you be trained to be a good leader? I think that we'd all like to think that we can, and I think that um, in many ways we can. We can all become better leaders, whether we can be as great as that great person, I don't know. But there are certainly things that we can do to help ourselves become better leaders, and there are certainly ways that we can behave which will help us become better leaders for particular groups. So, the great person theory focuses on who leaders are, and we might also want to consider how leaders behave or what it is that leaders do. So this is appealing because it suggests we can all learn to lead and to lead well, and this is what we'll talk about next. 
So there's a number of different ways that we can characterize leadership styles or behaviors of leaders. And one of them, I want you to think about two axes. And the first axis is, do you tell your subordinates or your followers exactly how they're supposed to do their jobs? Okay, if you tell them exactly how to do their jobs, then you'll, you're being what we call directive. If you assume that they have some ability and that they can figure out how to do their jobs and you let them do their jobs the way that they see fit, we'll call that permissive. Okay, so there's permissive and directive and these are ways that you um, uh, communicate with your subordinates or followers or team members, whatever you want to call them, about how they do their jobs. The other axis is um, decision making. Do you allow your subordinates to participate in decision making? So if yes, you do, then you have a democratic style, and if no, you don't, then you have an autocratic style. So we've got these two axes and these two categories and these two axes, so we have four different types of styles if we think about it this way. So we have a directive democrat, where you make decisions participatively, because you're a democrat, but you closely supervise your subordinates. So you are very directed in the way that you allow them to make the decisions. You don't really allow them to make many decisions. Or you could be a permissive democrat. You make decisions democratically, you allow others to participate in decisions, and you also allow them a great degree of latitude in how they do their jobs. Then we get to the directive autocrat. So this kind of person makes decisions unilaterally and then tells people what to do. Now, um, this strategy can work very well with inexperienced and underqualified uh, subordinates. It can be very effective. You will not be very popular, but you could lead your team to great things. Another style is the, the last style of these group of four is the permissive autocrat. So here you have someone who makes decisions unilaterally, but lets people do the job the way they want to do. So this can work very well with um, highly skilled people who are actually not interested in decision making. You make the decisions, they'll do their jobs. So it depends on the group uh, what style it will work best. And there's certain advantages and disadvantages to being a directive Democrat and a permissive Democrat. So there's not going to be any one way to lead that's going to work best for every group. What I'm hoping today is that I'll give you a sense of the different ways that there are to lead, advantages and disadvantages of them, and then you'll be able to make your own decision when you're in a leadership situation. Okay, so that was one way of looking at leadership style. There's another way to look at leadership style, which again has two axes and two categories. So now let's think about, are you concerned with productivity, getting the task done? Yes, no, high, low. Are you concerned with other people and how happy they are in their jobs? Yes, no, high, low. So um, uh, you can have um, low concern for productivity and low concern for people. You can have high concern for productivity and high concern for people, and you can be on those two other axes. So uh, just a couple of points about these axes. If you have high concern for the people in your group, um, that could be great for morale. Everybody's really happy in their group and they're working. But if that concern for your group is so high that you shy away from giving negative feedback, then that can affect productivity. So in some ways, too much free concern for the people, for your subordinates, can be bad because, um, because it might stop you from doing things that enhance your productivity. Similarly, not enough concern for the people in your group can affect morale. And if people feel that they're not cared about, people that their opinions aren't valued, they're not going to work as efficiently as they could. So there's overlap between these categories. Concern for people can affect productivity, even if that's your primary concern. Okay, so we've got uh, autocratic, democratic, permissive, directive ways of thinking about leadership. We've got concern for productivity and concern for people ways of thinking about leadership. And then uh, we have one more that we'll talk about. And this is called the situational uh, leadership theory. And situational leadership theory specifies that the most appropriate leadership style depends on the amount of emotional support and guidance followers require to do their jobs. So there's uh, four categories here as well. There's delegating, which is where you uh, don't, the people that work, are working with you don't require a lot of support and they don't require a lot of um, direction. So you just delegate, they take care of it. There's uh, participating. So here's where we uh, have um, 
you, you involve people in the decisions, you're relating to them, uh, and they don't require too much direction. There's selling, where now you are giving people more direction and you're also um, giving them a fair bit of support. And finally, there's telling, where you're giving them a lot of direction and not very much support. Okay. So those are ways of thinking about leadership. Let's close with some suggestions, some tips and tricks. So to be a good leader, try to build trust and inspire teamwork. You can encourage interactions, take initiative, and set a good example. Concentrate on expanding your team's abilities. Find resources, remove barriers. If you build the confidence of your team members, you may cultivate their untapped potential. Create a team identity. As a team leader, you can be responsible for setting goals, monitoring progress, and celebrating achievements as you reach them. You can make the most of team differences. If you build respect amongst the diverse team members that you have, encourage voicing of opposing viewpoints, and respect all the ideas, you will benefit from the diversity on your team rather than struggle with it. And lastly, you know that uh, unforeseen obstacles and opportunities will arise. And as the leader, you can be on the lookout for those and prepare your team to adapt to those. So um, that's our short introduction to leadership for today. Um, thanks for listening.